How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to my look at the brand new ASUS Tough Gaming X670E Plus Wi-Fi. Now that's a mouthful right there. Now this is the brand new AM5 platform from AMD. You do actually get two different versions, the X670 and then also the X670E, which is for the extreme overclocking and uh, for the enthusiasts, let's say. So, and this is the E version right here, uh, but you don't currently get this one in a non-E. There's very limited supply of the E's actually. But anyway, so we're going to do just an unboxing of the X670E plus Wi-Fi on this channel and then later on we're going to do a very nice benchmark video with the Ryzen 9 7950X so so very very excited for that one but for now it's just going to be a little unboxing of this board now currently it is retailing for around 330 dollars or units of Africa they're not available yet but they're probably going to retail around 8,000 rand now if you take a look at the previous X570 plus Wi-Fi tough board that one's retailing for around 5,500 rand for here in South Africa and in the US that's around 200 dollars so the new EVO version is around $130 or more compared to the previous one. Although once there's a non-E available, it might actually be cheaper going for my 280-ish dollars uh, around there. I'm not exactly sure I'm going to be the pricing, but I do also believe that for majority of people, the non-E will be good enough, but we're gonna go over some of the, the differences between the two um, and see which one you would rather want to get once they're actually available, of course. But now just before we see what's inside the box, I want to find out from you guys, are you actually planning to upgrade to the new AMF 5 platform with a Ryzen 7000 CPU? Or are you sticking with your current setup or possibly even upgrading to something else? Let me know down in the comments below because I'm pretty curious what everybody's planning to do with all of the new stuff being released. All right, so let's quickly get into the unboxing and see what we get in a side along with our motherboard. So firstly, I got our Wi-Fi and a tinner here as well, which we'll put back and then we can remove our board here so underneath the board you do get your tough gaming stickers if you like that you do have your user manual with your cd for your drivers on not that again i don't think any pc actually has a 5.25 inch bay anymore to actually use cds so but it's it's in there you do have your web storage pamphlet here and then also certification of reliability so uh, you have that. Then you have two uh, SATA cables. You have your uh, standoff screws for your M.2. You have some rubber pads, some more rubber pads, and then some additional standoff screws for your M.2s. Not really that much going on inside the box, but again, that's pretty much all you really need. All right, so now we can actually get the bad boy out and see how it looks. So. First off, you pretty much get an all black design here. With some of the previous tough boards, you did get a few more orange accents. You only get some uh, triangles here on the uh, on the heat spreader, IO cover, and then also some RGB and orange light here on the bottom side as well. And that's pretty much it, really. Um, nothing too crazy going on. I do actually like the more blackouts that you actually get. It's going to be a lot more neutral and it fits majority of systems quite nicely. So I actually do quite like it. All right, so now let's move on towards our CPU socket here because AMD made a lot of changes with the uh, previous uh, X. 570 and not the AM4 platform, you had a pin grid array or PGA where the pins was actually on the CPU. Now they change it over to the LGA, the land grid array style, where now the pins is on the motherboard. So it's it's a bit better. Uh, I know there's a lot of advantages and so on with that as well, but what I personally like is that if you potentially bend the pins on your CPU, it's really hard to actually fix it. And you most of the times need to th almost throw it away if you're not good with soldering or anything like that. So, and you don't want to throw away your expensive CPU. Well, now if you bend your pins on your motherboard, 
you can get a new motherboard, which is usually a bit cheaper. So you do have more options there. But of course, it is the new AM5 socket and the LGA1718 socket as well. But now with it being an entirely new socket, you're not going to be able to fit any of the previous, any of the previous uh, AMD CPUs on this socket. So uh, just be mindful of that. I think you will notice that pins going on pins will not fit. So hopefully you realize that before you actually try and fit a previous generation CPU on this board. But just keep that in mind. Now it is a bit of a bummer that you won't be able to fit any of the previous CPUs on the board, but AMD did state that they would like to support uh, the same uh, platform for the next uh, four to five generation of CPUs. So buy a board now, then you'll be able to use it for a long period of time. But of course you will lose out on some features in the next generation so that's just the option that you can uh, go for buy a super expensive motherboard now out of the range and use it all the way through now for this video again it's only going to be on our boxing um there's no benchmarks here but in the full review we're going to test it again with this bad boy the 7950x so definitely check out the link in the description for the main channel now moving on to our vrms we do have a 14 plus a 2 7 amp vr VRM power stage here so that does sound pretty decent and it should be enough for pretty much all of the CPUs we'll see how it performs with the 7950x I do still believe it's going to be enough but the heat spreaders isn't overly a large so we'll see actually how it performs but also I don't think necessarily you're going to put a 7950x on this board you'll probably do a 7700x or, or something similar to that now moving on towards our memory here we do have a four DDR5 only dual channel slots here so unfortunately you're not going to be able to use any previous ddr4 and there's not going to be any other models of boards with a ddr4 available it's only ddr5 with the am5 platform so keep that in mind so I, I think it's going to be a problem with the uh, b or b series of boards which are going to be cheaper but we'll see what the prices actually goes towards uh, in a couple of months. But for the board here, it does support a maximum of 128 gigs and speeds up to 6400 megahertz. Now, luckily, Kingston has sent over their Fury RGB uh, DDR5 memory for me, which is uh, 5600 megahertz. So we're not going to go over to the 6400, but this is again still a plenty. So a big shout out to Kingston for supplying me with the RAM here. It's going to be very useful with our CPU. Now, if you want to see a more motherboard video, subscribe because I do have a couple of more to come. And then also, I have already done a few on this channel and then also on the main channel. So again, check out the links in the description for that and subscribe to this channel. Now then, moving on towards our PCI Express slots here. This is also where there's a couple of changes between the different versions of the board, the E range and the non E range. So for the X670 E boards, they do support a PCI Express 5 for our top slot. But however, the X670 non E only features PCI Express Gen 4. So you won't be able to get that Gen 5 for our graphics card slot. Now, honestly, that's not really a big issue because none of the graphics cards available, and I believe in the recent future, is also going to actually need that extra bandwidth. We'll see, but it doesn't look likely. So it's not really going to be a problem if you go for the non-E version. It's just if you want to go for extreme and potential future proofing down the line, maybe then this board with the PCI Express Gen 5 will be the option for you. So being that this is a E board, the top slot is a Gen 5 slot running at full 16x speed. And you do also get a SUSE's safe slot uh, armor around the top slot as well to help prevent the board from actually uh, bending when you put in a beefy graphics card. And some of the leaked images from some new cards actually looks pretty large. <laughs> so that's definitely going to be needed. Now for the middle slot, this is a PCI Express Gen 
for a 4x slot so a bit shorter for your add-on cars and then the bottom one is also a piece express agenda a 4 16x a full slot but only running at a 4x speed so keep that in mind now uh, i'm a bit disappointed that you do not get one of asus a q release of buttons that actually you press the button and it actually pops open your pizza pizza express slot here you did get that on the previous ports but unfortunately not on this version probably if you go for the rog versions or one of the higher and tough boards those might have them but unfortunately not for this one not the end of the world we've lived with our manual slot lock here so that's going to be fine now then moving on towards our storage we do have a four m.2 slots with the top one up here one down here and the two underneath the heat spreader here so this one does not have a heat spreader which is a problem really but now the top one is a pizza express gen 5 4x speed slots so you can actually get the new ones that are actually available i'm not sure if any of them actually are gen 5 m.2 to get a crazy speeds out of that but currently gen 4 ssds are still plenty fast enough so uh, but you do have uh, the future proofing available also there and also it looks like there's not going to be a difference between the e and the non-e for our m.2 slot being pc Express gen 5 so that is quite nice now for the rest of the m.2s all of the three down here those are gen 4 so you can get plenty of speeds out of that so four crazy fast m.2s available now i do like that asus did include their q latch design here where if you want to install your m.2s and you don't want to use a screw or anything you can just use the latch here and that's going to keep your m.2 in a place and that's going to be for all of your m.2 slots here very very nice now for additional storage you do have a four sata ports where two of them being at the bottom here and a two a 90 degree ones here on this side as well now quickly if you guys have any idea of a product you would personally like me to feature either on this channel or on the other channel whether it's a review a comparison a benchmark video even a pc build then tag me and the brand in a tweet and i'll see if i can get that arranged for you but now moving on towards our io here on the side you do get your integrated io cover which again is just really nice no forgetting to install that it's pretty standard nowadays so i like that but for the top here you do have your hdmi and display port i believe hdmi 2.0 and display port version 1.4 and then you do get a four usb 3.2 gen 2 one of them are being type c and a three of them are being a type a you do also have your usb 3.2 gen 2 x2 20 gigabits per second type c port here your 2.5 gigabit ethernet port here and then a five usb 3.2 gen 1 type a port here in a blue next you have your wi-fi 6e your five audio connections and then also your bios flashback button so a decent set of io for here at the back now for our onboard connections you do have your dual 8 pin cpu power connectors you do have your standard 24 pin motherboard power then you do also have your q led codes here at the top which is pretty uh, nice and visible you do also have your usb 3.2 gen 1 type a port your usb 3.2 gen 2 type c port and then also very nice to actually get a three usb 2 headers which usually you only get a two of them but now you actually get a three so for any of the additional uh, coolers or add-on cards or other devices that actually needs the usb 2 header that's pretty nice because i have actually ran out of a uh, usb header and some of my builds because of the additional add-ons that you need then at the bottom here you do have also your thunderbolt or usb 4 add-on header so if you have an additional add-on core or anything like that you can use a thunderbolt for that then you do also have a three five volt addressable rgb headers at the top and the side and down here along with a single 12 volt rgb header as well now for fans you do have eight uh, pwma headers all around the board here on the side here as well but now that's pretty much it uh, for my quick unboxing video of uh, the asus uh, tough gaming x670e plus wi-fi <laughs> again the name is getting so long 
But no, uh, pretty nice uh, board. Uh, it, again, it's going to be a bit expensive at $330 compared to the currently $200 for the uh, previous version. Uh, but uh, you do get all of the new features and also future proofing along with that as well with Gen 5 M.2's Gen 5 piece of extra brace, uh, graphics card slots, uh, all of that. And also, of course, the uh, new AM5 socket, LGA1718 socket. So you do have uh, plenty of good reasons to actually upgrade to but honestly i would actually wait to see if they're going to release the non-e version because i think for majority of people that's going to be plenty enough and the tougher range has always been a nice middle range or budget or friendly kind of range for a majority of gamers who still want to get majority of their high end of features but at a very reduced price point and still being able to get use a high-end cpu along with that now not doing any crazy or clocking or anything like that but we'll also see how this one does now if you do have any questions leave me a comment down below but the best way is either to tweet at me or join the discord server link down below where i or somebody else there will be able to help you out with a majority of the questions you might have but anyway, a big shout out to Asus of Africa sending the board over for our unboxing and also the review. But now anyway, if you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. Uh, once it's available everywhere, I, it's, it's available on Newegg, but not everywhere else. But I will leave links down there and update it later on. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this video, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.